Hey, what's up everybody? This is Tammy. Welcome back to our video tutorial series on beginning Sprite Kit. In this part of the series, you'll learn about sprites, what they are, how to add them to the scene, and how to position and rotate them. As I mentioned in the previous video, we'll be building a game named Zombie Conga. In Zombie Conga, you take the role of a happy-go-lucky zombie who likes to party. Now, those are two things I know a lot about. The zombie and everything else in the scene are made up of sprites. Sprites are essentially the building blocks of any sprite kit game. They make up most of what you see on the screen. A sprite is an SK sprite node object, which is a subclass of SK node. SK nodes are commonly referred to as nodes. And nodes provide the baseline behavior for sprites. In fact, there are many subclasses like the SK Label node, the SK Video node, and the SK Shape node, just to name a few. Like any object, sprites have methods and properties. They inherit these from their parent, but they also have a few of their own. For example, a sprite may or may not have a texture. Now, most sprites do have textures, and the textures are basically the underlying artwork that represents the sprite. But sprites can also just be colors, or a blending of the two. You can even provide shaders, but we won't discuss those in the beginner course. So now that you know what a sprite is, let's get to work adding them to Zombie Congo. Let's start by launching Xcode. We're going to create a new Xcode project. You can either use this option here, or go to File, New, Project. Select the iOS application game for your template and then click Next. For the product name, type Zombie Conga. Once you've done that, click Next. Choose a location to save your project. I'm just going to choose the desktop. Once you've chosen your location, go ahead and click Create. Let's build and run the project to see what the Sprite Kit template gives you. Switch the simulator to iPhone 6 first. Now hit Build and Run. The Sprite Kit template gives you this Hello World label, and then when you tap on the screen, these tiny little spaceships show up. We don't want any of that to happen. We also don't want our game to run in portrait mode, so let's take care of cleaning up the default template. Stop the project and make sure your target's zombie conga is selected. Then head over to the device orientation and deselect portrait. There's one other place that you need to go in order to support landscape only, and that's the info.plist file. You'll notice that you've got two property lists here. Each one has the supported interface orientations. You wanna get rid of the portrait top and portrait bottom. So you can just highlight it and hit the little button, the minus button, and now your game supports landscape only. There are a few other things in the default template we need to get rid of. One of them is the gamescene.sks file. You can use this if you wanted to build your scene visually. We are not going to do that. We're actually going to build our scene in code so we can get rid of this file. Right click and choose delete, and then move the file to the trash. Now, because we're no longer using the gamescene.sks file, we need to go over to our game view controller and make some adjustments there. The first thing we can do in this file to clean up our default code is take everything in the view did load right after the call to super.view did load and delete everything. Those lines of code simply told Xcode to launch our scene using the gamescene.sks file. We also don't need the should auto rotate supported interface orientations or did receive memory warning functions. So go ahead and delete those as well. Your file should now look like this. Now let's modify our view did load function to create our scene, create our view, set a couple of options on our view and then present our scene. So on line 17, we're creating our scene. On line 18, we're creating our view. Lines 19 through 22, 
we are setting various options on our view. For example, we are saying show the FPS or the frames per second, show the node count, ignore sibling order. The ignores sibling order has to do with setting our Z position. And I'll describe what the Z position is momentarily. And then we're setting our scale mode to be aspect fill. You'll also learn more about that in a later video. Finally, on line 23, we're presenting our scene. Now, before we can set up our scene, let's go ahead and add some of our resources to this project. Click on the Assets folder, and then you'll notice here that there's the spaceship. You can highlight that and delete it. We're not going to need it. We are, however, going to need our own resources. I'm just going to move this out of the way here, and then grab my Resources folder. And you'll notice that there's two folders in here. We've got an icons folder, which we'll use in a minute, and an images folder. Go in there and you'll see all of the resources for Zombie Conga. Select all of them and drag them into the project. Now that you have your resources added, let's head over to the game scene and get our game scene set up. First things first, let's make this a little bit bigger. Okay. So you saw that the hello world loaded up when the scene first loaded. We don't need all that. So in the did move to view, go ahead and delete the code that's there. We also won't be needing, at least right now, the touches began, and this is where the spaceship was loading. So go ahead and delete that function too. Finally, delete the override function for update. Now we'll be putting it back in later, but for now, get rid of it. So at this point, your file should look like mine. Now that we have a nice clean file, let's start adding sprites to our scene. The first sprite we want to add is our background. Let me show you how easy it is to create a sprite. So here, we're just using the SK Sprite node, and we're grabbing the image named background1. So now that we have our sprite created, it's time to set its position. And we can do that using the position property, the anchor point property, and the Z position property. Now the position property just says, what is your X and Y location on the scene? The anchor point is what we use in Sprite Kit to determine what we're talking about within the entire sprite when we're referring to setting the X and Y position. Let me show you real quick what that looks like. So here's what our background looks like. The anchor point is shown here in red. Now it's a little bit exaggerated because remember the points are really tiny. So this circle's really large, but you can get the general idea of it. When we refer to an anchor point of 0 0.5 and 0 0.5, as you can see here in the middle, this says when we set our X and Y position for our sprite, use that for the point. This is the default. We can also set the anchor point anywhere within the sprite. So you can see here on the left-hand side, if we wanted the lower left to be our anchor point, we would set it for 0 0.0 and 0, 0.0. Alternatively, if we wanted it in the top right, we could set the anchor point to 1.0 and 1.0. And essentially, you can put your anchor point anywhere within your sprite. So with that said, let's go back to our project and get our background added. So you can see here on line 14, we're saying get the size, you know, the height and the width, divide it by half and use that for a position that will tell it to center it in the middle. Now, the only reason we're able to center it in the middle of our scene is because we've set our anchor point to 0.5 and 0.5. Again, remember that's the default and it sets the point to be the middle of the sprite. And that's why we can use the half the width and half the height to set our position. You'll also notice here on line 16, we've got a Z position and that tells Sprite Kit in the layering of your sprites, because as we add more sprites, some of them we want to be on top of other sprites. So we use the Z position to help set our order. Negative one is pretty low, whereas if I set it to 100, it's pretty high. So in, in that kind of scenario, 100, a sprite with a Z position of 100 would be on top of a sprite that had a Z position of negative one. And then finally, on line number 17, we are adding our sprite to our scene. We're doing that with the add child, and then we're passing in the background, which is our sprite. So let's go ahead and build and run. 
So you can see here, our background is perfectly exactly where we want it. Now I just want to reiterate the anchor point real quick. Let's change this anchor point to be zero and zero. And let's do build and run. So now you can see it's using the bottom left hand corner for its anchor point. And again, half the size, half the height puts it in the center. So that's kind of what the anchor point looks like in real life. Let's stop and undo our changes. So the other good thing about the anchor point, in, in addition to helping you set the position, is you can use it for rotation as well. Let's take a look at what a rotated sprite looks like and how you might do that. So here we're using the Z rotation to rotate it. And let's build and run and see what that looks like. So as you can see here, my sprite is now rotated on an angle and it's using the anchor point for its point of rotation. So it comes in handy when you need to rotate your sprites on a particular axis using a certain position. So let's stop and undo those changes. We'll just comment them out. Build and run just to make sure everything looks good. Fantastic, it looks great. But I don't know, did you notice that when we started it, there was this white splash screen? I'll do it again real quick. See that white screen? We don't want that. We want it to seamlessly go into our app. And we can do that by making an adjustment to our launch screen storyboard. That's what gets run when the app first launches. So I head over to the launch screen storyboard. And now I'm going to make this a little bit bigger so we've got more room. I'm also going to show the utilities panel because we'll need to add some things to our storyboard. And the thing that we want to add is an image view. So down here in my object library, I'm just gonna grab an image view and I'm gonna throw it out onto the storyboard. I'm going to set the image and I can do this, if you'll notice I am on my attributes inspector. I can set the image to main menu I'm also going to set the mode to aspect fill. And then I wanna set some X and Y and size position. So I'm going to go over to the size inspector. I'm going to set my X to zero, my Y to zero. And for the width, I'm going to set 600. And for the height, I'm going to set 580. I also need to set my constraints. Using the pin, I can set the top, left, bottom and right constraints. I'm going to set them all to zero. I'm also going to make sure that I do not constrain to margins. Verify that the items of new constraints is set for my update frames. This means that if any frame is not currently set properly based on the constraints, it will update that frame. And then I'm going to add those four constraints. Now when I build and run, You'll notice that that white screen disappears and in its place is my cool looking launch screen. But there's one other thing here. You'll notice that we do not have an icon. So let's go ahead and add our resources for our icon. Back at the assets folder, you'll notice that there's an option here for app icon. Go ahead and select that. And then head over to your folder where your resources are. And inside the icons folder, you'll notice that there are all these different icons. You'll also notice that they match up somewhat over here. For example, you've got the icon 29 and the 29 point here, 2X and 3X. So what I want you to do is take each one of these and throw it into its appropriate spot. So for example, the 29 2X goes there and the 29 3X goes here, the 40 2X and the 40 3X and so on and so forth. So go ahead and do that. So now that you have all of your icons set, go ahead and hit build and run. Jump out to the home screen and you'll notice that you have a new zombie conga icon. That's it for this video tutorial. And now we have a challenge waiting for you. Your challenge for this video is to add the zombie to the scene. I hope you enjoyed watching this video tutorial. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.